coming up next on the Living Faith Network. Showdown of Faith. It's happening in every neighborhood. Down every street. Sickness. Addiction. And violence has been turning countless homes into crime scenes. Suffering. Depressed. Alone. Suicidal. God is with you, and this situation of yours is going to change. But this show is here to bring hope to the hopeless, to prove to you that there is a solution. Now, on the air with Bishop Joshua. The Showdown of Faith. A show of less talk and more power. Wake up, America. The Spirit of God is with you to transform your life. Our God is a God that always overturns the cases. As Jesus once overturned the table, he wants to over, overturn your case. He wants your case to be overturned. Listen, if this word here, the Bible, the word of God is true, what is written in this word, in this Bible, has to come to pass in your life. We cannot just read the Bible and what is written here never comes to pass. You know the Bible perhaps by head. Yes, you have in your memory every chapter, verses, heroes of the past, all the stories of the Bible, you know it. Actually, you used to preach the Bible. You used to be a preacher, a pastor. But now you are there, full of problems, troubles, depressed. You are there right now trying to take your life. I challenge you, keep watching me. What I'm going to do here today is to change your life. If nothing happens, do not watch the Living Faith Network anymore. Do not wo watch the Living Faith Network anymore. But if you do what I am telling you to do, this word, this script today will be fulfilled in your life. Together with me this morning, I have Nori. She has the oil. She's ready to place your name, your problem, your heart situation inside of the holy oil. The oil is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that will intercede for you and also guide your life. Nori. Yes, and you can begin to call our helpline, those of you who are facing problems it doesn't matter in which area of your life, whether it's your finance, your family, your health, the team of faith is in the helpline ready to answer your call. The number to dial 1-888-332-4141. You can also send your prayer request through text message. That number is 1-888-312-4141. You see the team of faith, you will speak with one of these counselors. Once I have your name and your prayer request, it will be placed inside of the holy oil. You can prepare a bottle of water, a glass of water, and set it close to your television. Before the end of the program, Bishop Joshua will pray for all of you. Mine is already here. Prepare yours. I'm saying that God overturns situation. Let us read what the Lord Jesus said. It was not Moses, it was not Jacob, it was not King David, but Jesus himself said, in your sorrow will you be turned into joy. Yes, our God can do it. 
He can turn, overturn your sorrow into joy. Have you been put a mask upon your face? Have you covering your face with a mask? This is what is happening to many people nowadays. They take a mask. You have been taking a mask, but today you are going to take off this mask. Yes, you are masking the pain with one of these. Drugs, depression, anxiety, social media, or even go to clubs, parties, just to put on a mask. But our God will overturn your case. Yes, he's going to overturn your case. Your sorrow, your pain, your suffering will be turned into joy. Instead of living, many people are trying to survive. They live a party-filled life, smoking and drinking, hoping to intoxicate the pain in their lives. Being under the influence of drugs and alcohol never seems to be enough, since it only helps for a short period of time, leaving them to face reality, their worst enemy, which always forces them to take the mask off with no solution. But here, you don't need to mask your problems, and there is a solution for you. Stay tuned, and you will learn how you can leave the mask behind once and for all. I had depression at an early age. Then I started, once I had, dep I had depression because I came from a broken family. Um, I didn't believe, it. I did not believe on God. I was an atheist due to the fact that I had a lot of problems at home. I thought that nobody loved me. I felt very unloved by my parents. And then I just started to start being a rebellious child. I was born into a religion that we practice, but in the things that I will see and I will read, I will be, I said, I was like, this, there, there's no such thing as a real God. If there was a God, why am I going through all these problems? What's like, why is my family broken? Why is my dad being abusive? Like my dad was abusive um, with my mom. And I'm like, I remember I used to pray to the saints and I used to turn on candles and be like, you know, I want my life, our family to be happy. I don't want to see any more problems. I don't want my dad hitting my mom. It did not stop. And I was, it got to the point that I said, you know what, there's no point of life. I did not care about my own life. I attempted suicide. I started hanging out with bad influence, with people with bad influence. I didn't care for my life at all. I tried cutting myself and I grabbed all the medication together and I drank all, the, all of the pills. I ended up in like in the hospital with really bad stomach pain, throwing up everything. Then I remember one time I filled up the tub and I wanted to like throw something in the tub so I can like die inside the tub. But at that point, my sister, one of my sisters caught me, my, my younger sister caught me and she didn't let me. My breaking point was when like depression really hit, when depression really hit me and I wasn't able to eat, sleep, nothing. Like I was fully tormented and they even wanted to put me in a psychiatric hospital because they were like, what's going on with you? And I was like, I don't know. And they couldn't even, like they were trying to find the like, grand test. They even brought a psychologist. There was no solution. My mom found them about the church through a TV channel because my mom also was um, had insomnia. So she was looking, she was watching TV at night and that's when she found the, channel, the TV channel. And she's like, where she started, she's the one that started going. And she was not delivered at the time, but she knew that that's where we were gonna find a solution. And my mom started going because of me, because that was out of control already. So my mom found the, my mom found the church first and then she tried bringing me in and I said, no, I'm not gonna go to a church. I don't care, I don't believe in God. It's all a lie and you're being, you're being manipulated. At that time, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep and I was just scared, I was scared of, uh, I don't know, what was I scared of? Alcohol just turned very shaky and I, I, I remember I lost like at least 13 pounds in four days. My mom told me just give a life, give your give your life to God, you know, like give him, just give it a chance. And I remember I, I came to like I came and I was like, okay, this is my last solution. I 
didn't know what, like I didn't know what else to do because I mean I didn't care about living but I was dying slowly so I was feeling the pain that's when I started coming to the church I talked to the pastor and the pastor told me your life is gonna change he goes to like um, do a chain do a chain of prayer I was like I'm gonna do it I want to feel better I can't continue to live like this I started coming I started feeling better I was able to sleep which I wasn't I, I wasn't sleeping for five days already as I started coming more I started getting delivered from my thoughts from my suicidal thoughts from my depression um, my my dad started coming to the church I let the, I left that resentment against my dad I don't have depression anymore I don't I have a really good relationship with my parents they're my friends I don't have any more suicidal thoughts and now I want to help other youth and my own experience even even if you don't believe just try it out it will happen there is miracles are real there there is a God if there wasn't a God your my life would have not changed prepare your cup of water in a few Bishop Joshua will be praying for you Maybe you watch the showdown of faith on a regular basis, but you haven't taken the time to call to have your name placed in the new oil. If that is you, now is the time because the holy oil represents the presence of God. By placing your name, you will be able to personally receive the daily prayers that we make. Call us now to place your name in the holy oil so that the presence of God may assist you in your daily battles. 1-888-332-4141. And if you're a first time viewer, welcome to the Showdown of Faith. We are here to help you transform your life. You can start by calling 1-888-332-4141. And whether you're watching for the first time or not, you can feel free to call the helpline so we can have your name placed inside of the holy oil. We already have Jeff from here in Houston. He is asking prayer for strength and guidance. Jeff, your name is inside of the holy oil. We will be praying for you. We have Gladys from Chicago. She is asking prayer for a breakthrough in her financial life. We have Mrs. Wanda from the state of Florida. She is asking prayer for a breakthrough in her finances and Mrs. Gloria from Oregon. She is asking on behalf of her daughter who's addicted to alcohol. She wants her daughter to be set free. Mrs. Gloria and those mentioned, your names are inside of the holy oil. We will be praying for all of you. Send your prayer request through text message 1-888-312-4141 or you can feel free to email Bishop Joshua. Whatever problem situation you are going through, send them a detailed message about it. You can send it to B BF at universal.org where he'll be reading and also replying to your email. It doesn't matter how you are, what your pain, or what your suffering is. Jesus Christ is telling you now, speak out, I'm all ears. I have in my device here, you are going to send your text. We are going to reply and pray for you. Wherever I go, I have my device and I have the texts here. Send a text right now. This is my number, 1-888-888. 312-4141. Send the text with your prayer request. I shall be praying for you. Let me go to the line. Speak out. I am all ears. I have Miss Annette from Florida. Hello. Hello. Hello, Miss Annette. Tell me, what is your problem? How can I help you? Yes, um, my problem is that I suffer from depression, anxiety, and physical ailments. Uh, I first got depressed in 1989 when I came back from missionary work in Africa and other countries, and I had, went through a divorce. And uh, I got depressed. I was going in and out of a mental hospital for three years. I was placed on psychiatric medication, which I still take now. 
that I can't wean myself off. It's hard because I feel jittery and nervous. And also, it seems as though the devil has a spirit of infirmity over me that followed me for 32 years. Uh, I've been sick. Uh, I have uh, uh, ailments, uh, diabetes, hypertension, heart palpitations, osteoporosis, arthritis pain in the knees. Miss, Miss Annette, sorry to interrupt you. I see that you have many problems, many uh, complications, which Nori uh, has written already on the card, and we are going to place in a few in the oil. But now, I want you to understand something. The pressure happens when a person loses something or someone. In your case, it was the marriage. And because of that, you are depressed over, you said, 32 years. If I may ask, how old are you? Well, now I'm 64. Right. And you are doing the missionary work in Africa. That's when I was young. I was 23 when I went to Africa. Uh, I stayed overseas uh, five years. And when I returned, I was 32 years old when I returned to the state. But I'm not doing the missionary work now. I kind of uh, got away from it, but I do go to church. I was belonging to a church in Miami, um, Florida. Uh, I was attending there, uh, but I do submit myself to the church. Let me tell you something now. You need the spiritual help. Because you were doing the missionary work, I know many years ago, you were so young, now you are a senior, elderly, and you have a lot upon your shoulders. So, the Bible says that those who serve the Lord, the Lord will honor them. So, I said here at the beginning of the program that the scripture has to be fulfilled. If I am serving God, you have the liberty, the freedom, Miss Annette, to say to God, God, if I am serving you, if I believe in you, I want to see you in my life. So then God has to heal you as he promised in this word. The situation, Miss Annette, has and will change. Nuri. Yes, Miss Annette, I wrote down all the problems that you are facing right now, and I'm placing your name along with all these problems inside of mm -hmm. the holy oil, determining your complete and total healing, okay? Okay. You are going to be healed from all these diseases, from all these infirmities, because they are not from God. The scripture says, actually, Jesus said that your sorrow, your depression, your diabetes, your anxiety, your high blood pressure, all the complications will be turned into joy, will be turned into joy. God is going to make all your pain, your problem, your suffering to be turned into joy. All right? Okay. I want you to prepare one glass of water because in a few we are going to pray together. Okay. God bless you. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. Nori has names to be placed inside of the holy oil. Also, we have over there in New York City, Pastor Márcio, with one more testimony. Someone that came to us in need of spiritual help, and this person will share her story with you today. Nori. Yes, we have George all the way from Oklahoma. He is asking prayer for his family. He says there's a lot of family problems, and he wants there to be peace and unity amongst them. George, your name is inside of the holy oil. We have Peter from Washington. He suffers from insomnia. 
insomnia when the night comes. He's not able to sleep, and he's also been battling with depression. Mr. Peter, we will be praying for you. Your name is inside of the holy oil. We have Mr. Patrick. He is asking prayer for deliverance in all areas of his life. And we have Terry from New Orleans that is asking prayer for the entire family. Left their names as well so they can be placed inside of the holy oil. You can feel free to call the helpline or send your prayer request through text message and we will be praying for all of you. Pastor Marcel. Yes, Nori, we are here today, as Bishop Joshua said, with one more live testimony here to prove that God can transform the life of those who are watching us right now. Today I have here with me, Miss Irma. Miss Irma, I want you to tell us how was your situation, how was your life before coming to the Universal Church, before coming to this ministry? Before coming to the Universal Church, my life was a complete torment. I had no peace. I grew up in a home where I saw my father mistreated my mom for no reason. And because of that, I developed uh, hatred. I developed develop a hatred. I grew up not trusting, not trusting anyone because I always feel the same thing will happen. But I never gave up. I left my parents' home, right? I left my parents' home. I went to Canada. I lived there for many years where I met someone. And we got, we got married. And it's as though I experienced the same situation. I decided, see that I have no peace, I know I could get that peace from there. I really thought I could get the peace from the booze bottle, the alcohol. So before I go to bed at night, I take a glass of, <laughs> take a glass of whiskey. Just, just a second, you, you, you were passing through the same problem as your mother. It was a curse. We can say a, a curse because your yes. mother was suffering with your father. Yes. And you got married and you experienced the same problem. Yes. And you got depressed. I got depressed. So I turned to the I turned to the booze bottle. I thinking, you know, I'm searching for help. Mm -hmm. But all that did, it was just giving me peace for a moment. Peace for a moment, but I came to Canada, I came to, sorry, I came to America to visit my loved ones. So, so I, I went to visit another, I went to visit the church. And the church I went, I couldn't, I couldn't get any help. There was no help. But I was told of a spiritual healer. Mm -hmm. I was told of a spiritual healer. So I went to the spiritual healer to find what a, you know, find the solution. You you were trying to find the solution in any place. Yes, I did. I did. Uh -huh. So I went there to find the solution, but it was of no use. There was no solu solution there. He then he told me when he saw me, he said, "What are you coming to me for? I should be the one coming to you." And I just. I just laughed at, the, at that point. I said, what are you trying to tell me? I said, you're supposed to be helping me. I come to you with my problem, and you're supposed to be helping me, and you telling me I sh you should be coming to me and not, you know, in the reverse. So I went back home, and my oldest sister, she told me she got a flyer from someone, someone. And she said, this place helped many people, and maybe it would help me. So I went, I went, I found the address of the Universal Church. Oh, this flyer was a flyer from, from the, Universal the Universal Church. From the Universal Church. That your sister had received on the street. She yes. received one. Yes, for many years, mm -hmm. and she never put it to use. So she gave it to me and saying that. How the flyer was there her house? Yeah, she had it in her, in her bag uh -huh. for many years because it wasn't in any good, because <laughs> um, mm -hmm. it was almost in rags. Okay, so I so she said, okay, maybe this would you would, might find help there. So I took it. I went to the Universal Church. When I went, 
What I experienced, I said I wasn't going back to the church because I was embarrassed, because I never saw anything or experienced something like that before. What but did you experience when you, you came to the church? The, while the pastor was praying, I, people, people were on their knees, and eventually I found myself also on, the, on my knees and crying on my knees crying, and I decide I'm not coming back. This there was a voice telling you, don't come back to this church anymore. When I left the church, mm -hmm. a voice telling me to go back. It, it, did, it wasn't discouraging me. It was encouraging me not to stop, to continue going to the church, continue going to the church. And I keep, it's as though I'm talking to someone. This voice is as though I'm talking to someone. I'm saying, why should I go? It's too embarrassing. And eventually, I listened to the voice. And I heard of the, I went back. I went back with the, with the company of another, of one of my younger sisters. So we went to the church. And from that day, I went back. I never left. But... I listen to the pastors. I listen to them when they're telling you, come, seek, seek the Holy Spirit. I usually go on Mondays, on, you, on Fridays for my deliverance, and Sundays I go because they said, keep the chain, make a chain of prayer. And as long as you continue in the faith, and make that chain of prayer. Everything, everything will be okay. Because I could tell anybody this morning who is listening to me, it's not an easy fight. It is not an easy fight, but as long as you stay in the faith and do whatever you're told to do, listen to the pastors and do whatever you're asked to do, everything will be okay. Everything, because I think I even received the Holy Spirit before I was baptized in the water. I received it because the, even one Sunday in the church, the pastor said, who could put this demon on their knees? Who could put this demon so on their knees? You, you learned how to do the chain of prayer yes. on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Sundays, the most important days. Uh -huh. Yes. And what God has done for you here in this ministry? How are you today? I have peace. I have joy. No matter what anybody say to me, even if it's something to make me angry, I don't keep... My heart is not for that. So now I, you have a transformed life, right? Yes, Bishop. All right. Thank you very much for your testimony, your story. That's the, God bless you. the address of our church in Brooklyn, New York. Bishop, we are located here at 10 and 1 Fulton Street, Brooklyn, New York, between Franklin and uh, Classen Avenue. We are here every day, ready to help those who are suffering. As Miss Herman was helped, we are going to help those who live here in New York. Right. Miss Rachel came to us. She was two years in prison. She was also depressed. She had to put a mask when she came out of prison. But now the mask is off. She is now a transformed, changed person. My name is Rachel Johnson. I'm 52 years old, um, and I have spent uh, two years in prison. After my prison stay, being released, I have suffered with depression, panic attacks, anxiety. Uh, during my stay in prison, that's when I discovered that I, that I suffered with all those things. My family couldn't relate. They would try to be there, but no one still could. It was like I was screaming upon deaf ears. 
you know, because everybody will wave you off and be like, oh, you okay, you're home now, leave that behind you, you know, but I couldn't because I had been literally to the pits of hell and no one could understand because no one had, had been to, to prison. The panic attacks, it would feel like I would be suffocated, I would just be sitting there and it would feel like, like I couldn't breathe. And uh, I knew then that something was wrong. It would be like voices. So, um, and I didn't know if that was Satan. You know, is this the trick of the enemy that I'm hearing? Like, what is this? You know, telling me you're not gonna be okay just because you're out. Um, God doesn't love you. You are by yourself, you're alone. But I knew better because God is the one that got me through. I was flicking through the channels and I came across Universal, the showdown of faith. And I was, right before then, I was praying and asking God, um, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that I'm hearing? I want to make sure that it's you, Lord, and I hear your voice, and it's not the trick of the enemy. And when I got to the channel, I heard, stop it right here. I heard Bishop Joshua's voice, and it convicted me. It was with such conviction. And um, it resonated me, and, um, and I stopped it right there. And I listened to the sermon. And at the time, Bishop Joshua was talking about deliverance and um, how Jesus come to save. I was in need of deliverance because I had, um, I needed to be delivered from unforgiveness. I didn't know who I needed to forgive, what I was holding on to. But when Bishop Joshua started speaking, I started being delivered. Someone connected me with Universal Church here in Chicago and gave me the pastor's number and I caught the pastor. When I came to Universal Church, nobody judged me. And that was the main thing that stood out to me because I had been judged previously. The pastor here at Universal Church um, was, was very uh, strong in faith in helping me to build up my faith. The pastor invited me, told me, you know, the schedule of the church and, and what really stood out to me was that I could come every day. And that's what I really liked because people need Jesus every day and, and, you know, need somewhere to go and worship and fellowship. I started frequenting, coming every day, coming all the time. And um, I, started, I spoke with pastor and explained my life, my situation, some of my testimony, uh, what I needed was deliverance from unforgiveness because I was holding on to that um, unbeknownst to me. I, I didn't even know that's what it was. Once I released the unforgiveness and was delivered from the unforgiveness, the depression, the panic attacks, the anxiety, all of those things began to leave me. I noticed how um, I just started being able to um, communicate better, better with people that I wouldn't communicate with. Um, the prosperity in my life, I started prospering. There's the pandemic. There are blessings within the pandemic. And I was showing my account to show people um, the monies that I was receiving from unemployment. There was um, like really un un an unusual large amount, you know, uh, that I know came from God. Miss Rachel today is a God-fearing woman, a woman of God that's, uh, that has a clean heart and a clean mind and have been set free from all things that's not like God. No more anxiety, no more depression, no more panic attacks, no more mental challenges from behind being incarcerated. All of those things are gone. Her life is completely transformed and she took that step of faith in order to call to reach out for help and you can feel free to do the same as well. Many people are continuing to call the helpline, also sending their prayer requests through text message. We have Mrs. Betty, she called uh, and she's asking prayer for a loved one. She wants that person to be blessed and protected. We have Mrs. Deborah from Pennsylvania. She has been battling with many health issues. She is asking prayer for complete 
complete and total healing. We have Mr. Mario. He says there's family problems. He wants the situation to change. He wants there to be unity in the family. And Mrs. Martha from Michigan, she is asking prayer for healing for the family, and she wants to overcome depression. Ms. Martha and those mentioned, your names are inside of the holy oil. If you want to send your prayer request through text message 1-888-312-4141. Bishop Joshua, we actually have this text message from someone who preferred to remain anonymous. This person says, please pray for me and uh, my daughter. We need prayers. My daughter has dreams about demons and evil spirits, and I have problems with my, fi with my finances. I'm asking you to please pray for us. Right, I'm going to pray, but I want to state that everybody, anybody that wants to be anonymous, that is not a problem at all. You can still text, you can still call for us to help you. Uh, actually, my crew has already called this lady, this mother, she wants to be anonymous. But let me talk to her. Hello? Hello. Hello, miss. We got your text message. Actually, I have it here on my device. We are not going to show it or reveal your name, though we have your name and the name of your daughter. We are going to place inside of the holy oil. But now tell yeah. me, you are saying that your daughter has dreams with evil spirit, demons. What is going on? She has, she's come to me, and she's 17 years old, and she's come to me, and I woke me up out of my sleep and said, Mom, I have demons trying to attack me and the evil spirits trying to get me, and she's been frightened. She's been going through this ever since she was the age of 14, and now she's 17, and I've been taking her to the church. Like I said, I go to the church in uh, Jackson, in, uh, Mississippi, to Universal Christian. I've been trying to get her to go. She goes sometimes, sometimes she don't. But it's been bothering her for a while now. And I've been praying for her and getting the pastor to pray for her. But they just won't leave her alone. And I'm asking for prayer for my daughter. Let me tell you something. For the past three years, she has, three years, she has these um, dreams. That, does she describe yeah. the dreams to you? She told me, she told me she see a lady standing in green that's like standing over her and she said she can't see her face and she just tell me about these evil spirits just trying to attack her like somebody just trying to do something to her. Right. So this lady that appears to her is an evil spirit. To her, it yes. appears like a yes. new woman. But it is an evil spirit for sure that appears to her in a form of a woman. Do you understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes. And I know that you have been to many churches trying to find the help for your uh, your daughter. In a few, I'm going to tell you something that you need to do. Nori, did you uh, write her problems? Yes, I wrote down the problems that her daughter has been battling for the past three years. Okay. I have here Tobias with me, and he is from Africa. The roots of witchcraft, the roots of evil, and Tobias, you heard what this mother just told us. She is having these dreams for the past three years, and she is under these spiritual attacks. Are there evil spirits or rituals or witchcraft done to disturb a person during the night? Yes, Bishop Joshua. Usually when people get involved with certain people or when people get involved with certain games as children, for example, people play Ouija boards, people get involved with those uh, spiritual games. And those are many times the things that bring these evil works into children's lives. Uh, this mother, uh, you said you also have financial problems. Yes. All right. Let me tell you something. 
There was a girl that had the same problem of your daughter. I'm talking about the Bible, the days of Jesus. She was demon possessed. The mother came to Jesus, and when she came to Jesus, he set the girl free from the evil spirit. Right? I have a sister, my younger sister, at the age of 13. She used to have these dreams, even to manifest with demons inside of the house. She was free and she had no more bad dreams. Your daughter needs deliverance. We do have the Universal Church in Mississippi. I am going to have my pastor there in Mississippi contacting you and helping you so that you may break free. All right? Yes. So yes, this sir. spirit that appears to her during the night will be removed. This spirit that is there during the night appearing to her will be removed. All right? Yes. I have your yes, real sir. name. I have your real name. I have the name of your, your daughter. And I'm going to place it here inside of the holy oil. Okay. Thank you, Bishop. You are welcome. Keep watching the show. Okay, thank you guys. God bless you. Stay God tuned. Bless you. Those who need spiritual help, you need to contact us. Uh, Nori, we have somebody else, Mr. Quincy, all the way from Tennessee uh, on the line. Hello? Yes. Is it Mr. Quincy? Yes, sir. Okay, tell me, what is your problem? How can I help you? Well, it seems like uh, I, I've, I've been crazy my life, Bishop. I've had a little different experience three times. Right. How do you feel today? What's your problem? I'm severely depressed now. Depressed? Yes. Okay. Okay, notice right here your problem, your situation. We are going to put inside of the holy oil. Mr. Quincy? I'm, place, I'm placing your name and your problem inside of the holy oil, and we will be praying for your complete and total deliverance, okay? Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay. God bless you. All those who need spiritual help, you can just count on us. The number is there. You can send a text message and you can call. Tobias, tell me something. This Friday at the Universal Church, we are going to be working to undo the works of witchcraft. Those who have problems like this mother, whose daughter has bad dreams, they cannot sleep, insomnia, this Friday is the day, right? Yes, Bishop Joshua. Friday now, 7075 here in Houston, Southwest Freeway. We are going to be here together at noon. We are having a special, special prayer in order to go deep, in order to remove the works of witchcraft, the works of voodoo, the works of Santeria, the works that were done in order to afflict people's lives. If anyone has been afflicted, we are going to be here. I have here this picture that we've been showing of uh, the toolbox of a witch, a witch. If you have ever been before a witch, you went to read your palm. Look here. They usually like to prescribe or to say to people about the future. But now there are many things that are destroyed. If you've ever been before work like this, Friday now we are going to be together with Bishop Joshua to undo these works. Is it a curse or a coincidence? The same problems happen over and over again. Divorces, health problems that require surgery, financial failure, car accidents, spiritual attacks, it's not a coincidence, but a curse. Every Friday at the Universal Church, strong prayers are held against all curses. Come and break the curse that you and your family has been under. 7075 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074 at 7 p.m. and in every Universal Church.
she was gathering sticks to make her last meal. This widow was becoming hopeless. Yes. Then she met a prophet who began to ask for water and bread. A little water in a vessel? She said, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. He said, don't be afraid. First, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have. Then he prophesied. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. And today, as prophets, we are prophesying for you to receive the same blessing of multiplication in your life. Give just as a widow and you will see that your jug of oil will not run dry. There are two different ways you can make your challenge. First way is by phone. Just call 1-888-691-2291 and one of our attendants will assist you. Because we don't want just to receive your call and just write your information. No, we are going to prophesy that a financial blessing will come upon your life. Post your letter to 7075 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074. But it is very important that you never send cash. Only check or money order made out to the Universal Church. She had only a little oil and flour. However, when the man of God, the prophet, told her to use that oil, to use that flour, there was a multiplication. Because the Bible says, let us read it together, that she ate, he ate for many days. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. Why? See what happened. The flour, the oil was not used up. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry. According to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. And right now, God is speaking through us. Through us, you are going to sow your seed, and just as it happened in Zarephath, it is going to happen over there where you are. Just as it happened in the days of Elijah, it is going to happen in your life as well. You are going to sow the seeds and I will pray so that you may have flour in abundance, so that you may have oil, meaning prosperity. Our God is a God that prospers. So call us right now and sow the seed. The number to call is one 888-691-2291. You can go ahead, you can call this number, and there will be prosperity. You have not been able to pay your bills. They are paying up. You are not able to pay the mortgage. Actually, you already have this eviction note. You have this huge amount. Yes, it is a huge amount of debt to pay. You are owing even the IRS. You need a solution. Here's, here is the solution. Look here, please. This is the solution. I will pray and the Lord will prosper. He is going to bless your life. Your flour, your oil will not finish. Because the Lord is a God that promises and He fulfills what He has promised. Your seed of a hundred, of fifty, of twenty, do not be afraid. Sow your seed. The counselors are ready to receive your call and to prophesy right away prosperity upon your life. 
Let me show the counselors right now. When you sow the seed, these people will pick up the phone and they are going to assist you step by step on how to sow the seed. And the pastors will right away prophesy the blessing upon your life. Ricardo sold the seed into this ministry. God blessed his finances. Hello, my name is Ricardo. Um, over a year, I was suffering of depression and anxiety because I was uh, persecuted and harassed uh, at work. And basically after that, I lost the job and I was unemployed for over a year. Um, I was falling very deeply into depression. Um, I was very upset and I didn't want to even live in anymore. When I was unemployed, I believed that maybe people didn't like me when I was going to the interviews because I, I started to send so many resumes and and I, and I was uh, overqualified in many different positions. Um, I know that in the past I, w I lost hope because I was thinking that I couldn't make it. As soon as I saw my seat, um, I, I received two invitations for, for jobs. One that I was looking forward to have is to become a behavioral therapist and the company offered me the training and, and to, have, uh, to have the license. And as well, they offer me now all the hours that I want to have. And in addition, um, a job, in a federal job that I was trying to get for a while, for months. And they, they took me in the top 10 of, of the country and they offered me a job as well that I'm gonna start very soon. I, I got a, a brand new car, 2020, exactly the car that I wanted to get. I, I got it. I feel fantastic. I feel that my future is, is, is full of hope that it's going to open up. I'm, I'm just looking forward to serve God and to be able to tell others that God can help anyone, that evil exists, but that if you have God in your side, you're going you're gonna to bring triumph and you're going to bring victory to God. He will be with you and you will overcome. You will overcome. Let me complete what he said. You will overcome when you sow the seed, when you use your faith. Hey, your flour, your oil will not finish. She was left with nothing, and she only had this thing, the flour and the oil. That was the thing that she had. But there was prosperity, multiplication. Let me show to you the two ways you have on how to sow your seed right now. Sow your seed, give it to the Lord, much more he's going to give it to you. Sow your seed today and reap the blessings of God in your life as it is written. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. To all the viewers of the Showdown of Faith on Living Faith, you have two different ways in which you can sow your seed by calling us at 1-888-691-2291. Our assistants are ready to answer your call and guide you through the process of sowing your seed. By mail, send your check or money order under the name of the Universal Church to 7075 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074. Whether you're calling to sow your seed or you're calling to have your name placed inside of the holy oil, you can reach out for help. We have Miss Avant from Georgia. She is asking prayer for her entire family. She even left their names so they can be placed inside of the holy oil. We have Carter. He is asking prayer for a breakthrough in his finances. He's tired of living from paycheck to paycheck. We have Mrs. Yvonne. She is asking prayer for healing 
willing for her family to be blessed and she wants financial stability and we also have mrs janice she is asked in prayer for deliverance she wants to be set free from depression miss janice and those mentioned your names are inside of the holy oil you can call the helpline and speak with one of these counselors or send your prayer request through text message 1-888-312-4141 we have jacqueline who sent her prayer request through text message we will be praying for you jacqueline and many more people who are doing so and you can even email bishop joshua to bbf at universal.org and if you haven't prepared your glass of water prepare it now because in a few bishop joshua will be praying for all of you maybe from the outside looking in your life seems normal successful healthy and happy <laughs> but no one knows the pain and depression you are dealing with <laughs> mask to cover your problems anymore the universal church brings to you the online pastor live chat pastors are available 24 hours a day free of charge to give you advice spiritual guidance and pray for you and your family you can access this service by visiting ulfn.org slash online pastor don't hesitate real happiness is waiting for you Happiness. You can contact the pastor right now. You can speak to the online pastor. Every Wednesday, we have the service of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God wants to dwell inside of you. Today, we are talking about the mask, about depression. When you are so depressed, you have to put a mask on your face. You know, in this pandemic, many are those who are enjoying, yes, enjoying the mask, the mask up, because they, they have a way to cover up their sadness, their frustration. People only see their eyes. They try to hide their depression, sadness, wearing this mask. For some people, it's something good. They're not even wearing just for protection from the virus, but they are hiding the bitterness, the anger that they have inside of them. Today, we are going to have this special service to seek the Spirit of God. Here in Houston, Texas, 8 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, 4 in the afternoon. However, 7 p.m. is the members meeting a meeting where we are going to read the Bible together and we are going to seek the Holy Spirit. Once you receive Him, your life will never be the same. My address is 7075 Southwest Freeway. The church is between Belaya and Hillcroft. Come to see me, even today, 7 p.m. Houston, Texas, zip code 77074. The rush of everyday life, the stress of work, and the time spent in traffic consume your energy and your time to the point of not being willing to feed your faith? You need a break to strengthen your spirit and prioritize what is really important in your life. Every Wednesday is when the School of Faith is held an essential meeting for spiritual growth and maturity. In a simple and practical way, you will study the Bible and learn how to apply the teachings in your daily life. It's a proven fact that if your faith doesn't grow, it will certainly decrease. The School of Faith, Wednesday at a universal church near you.
you can call the helpline to have your name placed inside of the holy oil. I have more names. We have Mr. Elvin. He is asking prayer for his family to be blessed. Mr. Elvin, your name is inside of the holy oil. We have Miss Marlene. She is asking prayer for a breakthrough in her financial life. And we also have Mrs. Brenda. She is asking prayer for total healing in her body. Mrs. Brenda and those mentioned, your names are inside of the holy oil. Those of you who have your bottle of water, your glass of water, you can take it in your hand right now because Bishop Joshua will pray for all of you. Before this prayer, we have Miss uh, Yvonne on the line. She has a testimony to share with us. Hello. Hello, Bishop Joshua. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Yvonne. Um, How are you? How are you? Um, I'm good. Uh, I just wanted to say that I remember that after uh, going through uh, many months, six months, under we were placed under curse, me and my husband, by his family, which is uh, the original uh, family of, of witches and, and a warlock. His grandmother had placed a curse upon us for separation, for division. Right. Division, like division. Yes. Uh, but permanent. And then you, you spoke to me, and you said that uh, I mean, and I kept on with my faith, right? And me being the one, and he had backslid. Yes. But then he tried coming back, and every time there was going to be breakthrough, there was a block. Something would block it. So it was just me and the Lord, and I stayed remaining in my faith. I called. You spoke to me. You said just a few words, and you said everything's going to go better. This is a curse, and that's what you had said. You determined it was a curse. Right after that, you said that it would be... Actually, we gone. have we have and, here the video. Yeah. Uh, do you remember how long ago you called the show? He, 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 he came back the next day. Uh, can you hear me? Breakthrough. Miss Yvonne? Hello? Yes, hello. Do you remember how long ago you called? <sighs> Just uh, the wall. Right after you said it. But some it weeks happened. ago, some weeks the ago, day some days ago, you called us, right? Yes. Okay, I and have the then, video of our conversation. I'm going to play it here, and I'll be back talking to you. Miss Yvonne, tell us, how can we help you? Um, I, me and my husband had a, a curse placed upon us um, by his grandmother. Um, we've been separated since March before the before the quarantine and all that and we and it was like a permanent separation she would call every time at like 3 a.m in the morning continuously and then uh i would tell him like what is she doing calling at this hour you know she told me to block her but then she i mean told us you know that she was she actually said it you know that she would be it's a family that we're dealing with of, of warlocks and, and, and witches, okay? And he was known as a black sheep. Also in my family, I was known as a black sheep. Let me tell you something. Santa has done a lot in your family the past generation, but now is your turn. Miss Yvonne, very soon you are going to be back here on the show that will face testify about a beautiful family. Hello, Hello Miss Yvonne. Yeah. It was last Saturday. <laughs> wow. Last okay. Saturday. Well, it just seemed like right away to me. Yes. After such a very long time uh, of me battling with oh, the Lord and so myself. After, just... after that the prayer, he came back. Yes, he did. And there was breakthrough. I mean, the only one thing is that they continue to try to break it. Now my family and his. But let me tell you something. I used to say that God does not do anything incomplete. The same God 
who heard our prophecy, our words, and brought him back, is the same God that will, as you said, there is a breakthrough, is the same God that will make everything to fall into the right place. All right? Amen. Yes. And yes. as I said last time, I would have you back to testify, and here you are testify. And more are to come <laughs> for you and for your family. Yes. All right? Amen. God yes. bless Amen. you. Have a good yes. one. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. You Bye -bye. are welcome. You see, my friend, just last Saturday, he came back, and this time he came back to stay. So let us pray right now. Let us talk to God. He said, Jesus said, your sorrow, your pain, your frustration, your suffering, you can name it. The word of sorrow, you can replace by your problem. Yes, do it. You are going to say, my sorrow, my disease, my unemployment, my suffering, my depression, my problems will be turned into joy. They will be turned into joy right now. Let us put our hands together. Let us pray to God. It's now the moment of prayer. Let us talk to God. Here I am. In this moment of prayer, so despised without love, need to talk with my Lord. Oh, my Lord oh, and the Father, Lord. indeed we need to talk to you. To talk to you on behalf of this person that is in suffering, in pain, that has to put a mask to hide the problems. Others, they are masking up the problems through social media, drugs, alcohol, or a spirit of the Lord. But right now, in this very moment, I pray for this broken heart. I pray for this person that is in agony, in suffering, in pain. Oh Lord, my God, you are the Savior. Enter this life, enter this house, and transform this person's life once and for all. God Almighty, I present to you this water. Let this water be a holy remedy. Lord, this person cannot take it anymore. There is this mother whose son is in the hospital, whose husband walked away from her house. She has no peace. Just last night, she could not sleep. There is this mother in affliction whose daughter has this bad dream. I rebuke this evil spirit, this woman that appears to her daughter during the night for the past three years. I rebuke you, evil spirit. My Lord, enter your peace. This person has to be real. Yes, has to be real and no longer, no longer cover up the problems. A spirit of the living God, bless the sponsors of this ministry. Just as I have here my book, the book of the sponsors, I ask you, oh Lord my God, read each and every name. Those who are sponsoring this ministry daily, let these people be prosperous and have abundance. Bless United States of America. Bless our land and our country. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. My water is blessed. Your water is blessed. Drink it with all your faith. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my Foot to be moved, the Lord which keepeth thee. That 
That's right. Your joy is now forever. Yes, it's not something temporary. God has turned your problem, your sorrows into joy. Now, the joy is inside of you. And you shall see great, greater things happening in your life. The showdown of faith is about less talk and more power. The Universal Church, pastors, assistants, volunteers, uh, bishops, 